Hello, ye developers. Welcome back to the part two of Dynamic Forms. Sorry about the last lesson and how it ended. Actually, my mic stopped working. And but so here's the part two. Uh, for so the first thing is uh, right now we can only increment four. That is because we have set the limit of four here. So we can put ten there and it will work and it will limit it to ten. So I can increment ten. There you go. So everything is working. The validation is working. So you don't have to worry about that as well. So the next few things that I want to talk about is in the last lesson I mentioned about this form ID being dynamic form, and we had to put it here as dynamic form as well. So this is these are properties of this widget. In order we have to define, we have to define those. I mean, for example, if you create, if you put the add item class here to the insert button you have to put the add item class to this insert button and of course the same goes to remove item and if you make this dynamic form id it has to be the same as the dynamic uh, same as id as here so all these things has to match for example if you want two dynamic form widgets in the same form then you have to change a couple of things first you have to change the add item button because if we have if you have two then when clicking the add item button it will add two fields to the both widgets so actually we have to change the add item class names and the remove item uh, delete buttons remove item class name as well so if this is add remove item one this has to be remove item one as well it has to be exactly the same and the widget item says it has to have the class of item right now we have item class so if you are going to have two dynamic form widgets then you have to change this value for the second item as well so if it's this is item and this is also item change the class name uh, of that widget item as well okay uh, so that is a small issue that i found out when implementing two dynamic form widgets in the same form okay so let's get back to saving this record uh, so before saving this we have to create a class that we need to use which is a model class um, he has given the code here so I'm going to copy and paste it and create my own file so that I can use it so I'll create a new file in the models directory and paste this and save it as model.php and I'm going to change the namespace to backend because we are using it in the backend and models. It's in the backends, backend models. So uh, next, let's move on to the action create and change the things that we have to change in order to create submit our PO items. Uh, so first, let me get the code and I will explain the whole thing. and we'll place it here okay the next first thing we have the model addresses actually we are not using model addresses we are using models pure items and we are using the model class that we use created here see see that it has a static function called create multiple and it is going to create multiple so we have changed here PO item as that and load and we have to load the multiple uh, we have we are creating the we are creating the multiple models next we have to load those multiple models after taking i mean this function returns all the submitted values we have to load them into this uh, the multiple number of model uh, po item objects that we have created it is the same thing here same model load this load this is going to load to the model attributes and here it's going to load to the PO items objects uh, so before using this you can't use this I mean we have to use this in the top so use backend models and model okay that is done 
uh, next I'm not going to worry about the Ajax validation so I'm going to remove it and next we have to validate our objects first we had to validate the pure object and next we have to validate our pure items objects next if these two both of them are valid we are going to move into to begin this transaction uh, we are going to save our mod first we are going to save our model PO so this will save the model PO and then if we, that is saved then we are going to loop through the objects that we got so PO items and I'm going to change this to model PO item and next we have to set our foreign key so model PO item we don't have a custom ID we have a PO ID as the foreign key and we are going to get the model ID so this is going to have the PO ID and that's going to be assigned to the PO item PO ID next we are going to save our PO ID PO item and that's it okay few things left to do uh, we don't want this statement here return uh, view file here because it's going to return it here and we're going to put this not model customer but model ID okay so f there are a few things for example when this we have to check whether all we check whether this is valid validated and this is valid so if you go to the models PO item model PO items model you can see that PO item number is required that is true we get it from here no problem this is required and the quantity is required as well but we have put the PO ID as required as well but we should remove that if we don't remove that then this will not get validated because it is required that we have the PO ID but we haven't assigned the PO ID yet we assign it here where do we assign it there, right there we assign the PO ID so actually we have to remove that from here so let's remove that and let's check out our code and whether it's working fine let's create PO1 some description and let's create the PO items PO item 1 and the quantity is 10 let's create another one PO item 2 and put the quantity of 20 and submit okay the PO got saved. Let's check whether we got our PO items got saved. Yes, we got our PO items saved as well. So that is how you create a dynamic form. Uh, next thing we can do is the update. So right now it's going to give a bunch of errors because we have not done the update code because we have not changed our action update code. Where is it? Where is it? Not here. We have not changed our action update. We are not transferring anything. Uh, so, yeah. So I think I'm going to leave that up to you. Uh, if you find any questions or problems, I will do a lesson on the update as well. I, but I don't think you will find any issues because it's fairly simple. You can see the code here, and it actually it's self-explanatory uh, and. Uh, if yeah if if any questions are there please let me know drop a comment comment or drop me a message i will create the action update for the dining form as well anyways uh, thanks for guys for watching and i hope you enjoyed the tutorials and keep on coming the request making the request i will try to do them all and subscribe if you haven't already and please share my tutorials help someone else as well okay have a good day then take care bye